Good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining us for episode 28 of Cage Side Convos. I am Rick Huntsman. And this is Quince. And we're coming to you guys live, as always, from American Top Team here in Watertown. Um, so this week, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, managing expectations, uh, how we can manage our expectations of other people, of ourselves. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, perceived expectations, so what we think other people expect of us mm -hmm. um, and then we're gonna kind of kind of build off of there talk about different ways uh, you know the, the effects that having rigid expectations has on anxiety um, and kind of different areas in our life too um, so one of the things uh, what turned my mind on to this is um, I've, I've got a buddy of mine <coughs> who uh, always talks about um, managing expectations and typically when he talks about it it's uh, mostly managing the expectations of other people, mm -hmm. right? So what we expect other people to do, um, and he, you know, kind of talked to me about how he would get frustrated when people didn't act a certain way, didn't act as he expected. Uh, so a lot of the dialogue initially um, for me and him was him kind of, you know, basically breaking down for me what that meant and how he dealt with a lot of that. Uh, you know, essentially it's, uh, I think the biggest uh, pitfall is when we expect other people to act like we do, mm -hmm. right? Um, so uh, if somebody you know says something off color to you or says something irritating to you, you think the first thing you know I always think is, why would they say that? I would never say that to somebody. Or uh, you, um, when people act coldly, mm -hmm. you know why? Why don't they care about this issue? And why don't they care about that issue? Or why don't they care about this person's struggles? Or why can't they empathize? And uh, really, it, it I think it just serves to disconnect us from from the other person. You know, um, we only see the interaction from our point of view and only seeing it from our point of view, we expect them to also see it from our point of view, right? So we don't take the time to empathize or understand why somebody would react a certain way in a certain situation. Right. So that leads a lot of times to, to frustration or anger, mm -hmm. you know, um, instead of cultivating a, a, you know, a deeper feeling of understanding mm -hmm. between you and, uh, you and another person, right? <coughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think you know the first thing you do it is it's, it, it always comes back to the ego, you know, sure. and, yeah. and having your ego out there, and uh, that's the first thing that's going to res uh, respond right. to any sort of interaction. Sure. Um, sure. And without being able to get around that uh, and to kind of putting yourself in their shoes, right? Um, you know, it's it's just the lack of communication in general. Sure. Sure. Uh, and yeah, I, th I mean, I think that's really important uh, because that kind of links into uh, um, the perceived expectations as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of the um, a lot of the reading that I found on this talked uh, very specifically about business environments, mm -hmm. um, dealing with coworkers or bosses. And uh, there's a lot that's kind of left in the ether of uh, the unknown, you know, because right. there's no there's no communication and. People get uncomfortable walking up to a friend or a coworker or a loved one and saying, "This is what I expect for you from you. This is how I expect you to perform in this situation. <clears throat> this is what I expect for you in you know in your job, right. and so on." Because they feel there's going to be there's going to be a backlash, you know, if they don't agree with the expectation. And on the flip side, we can get very anxious when we don't know what other people expect from us. Sure. You know, um, if you're you know if you're in a job situation and you're not exactly sure, you know, your project manager gives you something to work on, you're not exactly sure what they want done, how they want it done, mm -hmm. and there's a fear of going and asking because we don't want to look stupid, kind of like you said, we don't, we don't want our ego to be bruised, we don't want to appear right. inferior. So we get very anxious about it and we find ourselves kind of wallowing in, in the dark a lot of times because we're bashful or we're too timid about communicating that, you know, and, and saying very clearly, this is how I expect you to act when I do this, or this is how I expect you to perform your job, or this is what I expect from you, you know, as far as, um, like we were talking earlier with coworkers and stuff, like about being on time and, um, you know, things of that nature. Right. Yeah, you know, <coughs> because expectations are, um, while they are important, you know, anyone who's worked in, um, you know, sales or uh, retail management, right. you know, you get certain expectations thrown down on you. And um, 
you know, certainly if you want to raise your goals, you know, if you want to be able to make more money, you got to shoot your expectations a little bit higher. But right. uh, I'm sure there, I, I know I've been in the position where uh, you kind of get your numbers brought down from upper management right. and they just seem astronomical. Yeah. And you're like, I don't understand where they're getting these ex expectations or goals from. Right. Um, you know, how realistic is that? And, and uh, moving, you know, being on the receiving end of those uh, expectations or goals and then also being in the management and hearing where they get those numbers, uh, you realize sometimes they give these astronomical expectations because they really are just trying to put that foot down on you. And they right. want to keep people kind of in that stressed, right. Uh, right. you know, uh, mindset because they're a little more easy to, to control that way right. when, when people feel like they're always walking on thin ice. Right. So, you know, um, you know, they could be, expectations can almost be used as a weapon if not communicated properly. Sure. And if not based mm -hmm. um, in a uh, very realistic, in a more realistic setting. Right, right. Um, so I definitely think it's... Um, uh, like you, I, I like how you said it could be used as a weapon because if you have a management team that's passing down these expectations because they intentionally want you to stress and want right. you to worry, want you to fret over your job, and that's how they're trying to motivate you to work harder, right. that's very toxic and it's not um, very productive for cultivating an engaging environment. You know, But on the other hand, if you have uh, a boss or a supervisor that's giving you these high expectations because they think that you're capable of getting there yep. and you just need that extra push, you know, because there's sometimes, <laughs> and I do this with my students sometimes, I'll, I'll tell my students, you know, this is what I expect from you and I'll get that, you know, get that kind of uh, glossy eyed look like, I don't, you know, I don't think I can do that. But right. if you have somebody that's in a position to see what you're capable of and you don't necessarily know what you're capable of, you know, they might right. put an expectation on you that you might not feel realistic but you could be underselling yourself. Sure. So uh, sure. I think like you said, if it's communicated properly, it could be used as an awesome tool, mm -hmm. but if communicated poorly, it can be used, you know, they definitely be weaponized. Yeah, at, you know, and of course, <coughs> um, communication is everything. You know, we, yeah. we keep coming back to that time and time again. Uh, and, and when I think of uh, expectations, or when I think of the a situation, so say it's a business situation, back when I would, I was transitioning from art into more uh, 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 business ventures. Right. Uh, and I would throw um, a lot more shows. I was throwing shows and I was getting, trying to get all these people on the same page. I had this big vision as far as what the shows could be, what it could amount to, yeah. uh, both the particular show and moving forward. So I had all these, you know, great ideas. Right. And, and uh, I, at the time, and this is something the, looking back, you know, I can realize it was just because it was due to my inexperience. Right. But at the time, my expectations were huge. And right. so they, they were, I, I had a lot of expectations of myself, uh, a lot of expectations of the artists I was working with. Um, but where I was getting my goals from, you know, I was just kind of making them up because they weren't necessary, because right. I had not done this before. So right. they weren't necessarily rooted in any sort of reality. Um, I would you know, expect certain things from artists, whether it is being on time or, right. or showing up with the material or having the material down right. or how you carry yourself uh, in public. I had all these expectations um, without really um, understanding the individual artists or the people that I uh, was working with. Sure. And, and that kind of uh, created a rift, uh, you know, either between myself and the artists or uh, myself and my own expectations of the situation right. and so you know I might I you know at times I would take it out on other people um, when really it was me asking something from people who might not have been capable right. at that time right. uh, well, it, and even even outside of you know whether they're capable or not a lot of times I think we you know back to the communication we quietly expect things of people and we right. don't reach that far we get upset right. and instead of saying I expected you to do this we just we lash out you sure. know we gloss over that part of the communication instead of saying this is why I'm upset I expected this from you you underperformed so this is the conversation we're having right. now it's just you know all of a sudden it's fuck you I don't want you on my show or you know we, right. we're not gonna work together or whatever you know it, it manifests poorly mm -hmm. for sure. and like you said you know sometimes you expect things from people that you expect from yourself right and uh, 
while I do believe, you know, it's it, it's always best to connect with, you know, the people that you kind of vibe with on the same level um, and have the same expectations of self, uh, I think it's a big flaw to just assume that everyone is going to have that right. same drive or goal or right. um, vision as you. Absolutely. And Absolutely. that's uh, less of a fault of theirs and more of the person mm -hmm. who's kind of doling out those expectations. Right. right. So, uh... <clears throat> One uh, a big exercise for me over the past um, probably eight months or so has been uh, understanding how to assign responsibility, mm -hmm. right? And I think that kind of factors in here because um, I don't like I don't like placing blame. Mm -hmm. I don't want like making somebody's fault. You know, something is somebody's fault. You know, because I have uh, I have to assume part of the blame. Other people have to assume part of the blame. But understanding and assigning responsibility says, okay, well, factually, this is the role that this person played in this, mm -hmm. you know, and if somebody underperforms or somebody doesn't meet an expectation of mine, if I assess that as assigning responsibility, understanding, okay, are, yes, they're responsible for their actions. Mm -hmm. They're not responsible for disappointing me because they didn't assign the expectation. I assigned the expectation. So really the, you know, the responsibility in that matter lies on on myself right. you know I have to say okay well I had too much of a lofty expectation or I had an unspoken expectation of them you know I didn't take into consideration where they're at in life what they have going on outside of whatever scenario we're in right and I didn't communicate the expectation to them so you can't expect somebody to do something that they don't know they're supposed to do mm -hmm. you know and uh you know, a lot of that factors into this notion of, of meeting people where they are, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so the big one for me, and I, I always use this as an example, but my expectation of people, if we're going to meet for an engagement is you're 15 minutes early. If it starts at 9 o'clock, you're there at 8.45, that's on time. That's the expectation. Um, I'm typically pretty vocal about that. I let mm -hmm. people know um, this, is, this is how I perceive being on time and being. Now, if people show up right at nine o'clock, to me, they're late because that's when things are starting, yeah. you know? Now, just because that's my expectation of you're ready to start at nine o'clock doesn't mean that that's their expectation or that that's their understanding, mm -hmm. you know? So there has to be a middle ground there and I understanding, okay, well, this isn't how these people perceive life. This isn't how they operate. There's a certain amount of responsibility on me to accept that. Right. right? So I can lower my expectations of that person or you know whatever and say, okay, well, this person is gonna be here five minutes late. I expect that, mm -hmm. okay? And still maintain a high standard of 8.45 is on time, right. right? Anything after that is not on time. So a lot of times what happens is people that are habitually late, you know, say 9, 10, 9, 15, they show up always, they come in at 9.03 and they want to celebrate. Oh, well, you know, at least I'm not 15 minutes late today mm -hmm. or I'm earlier than I usually am. Yeah, okay, kind of. Yeah. And you can, meeting them there, you can provide encouragement. Like, yeah, you're getting better. But lowering your standards to the point of now that's an acceptable, that's on time, right. that affects, you know, your, your own level of excellence as mm -hmm. well. You know, until they're there at 8.45, they're not really doing good. They can be doing better and we can be encouraging. We can meet them where they are as they whittle that away and start restructuring things to meet your expectation. Right. If they have a desire to meet that expectation. You know, some people don't give a shit. Right. Which is, you know, which has to be fine. I can't expect people to perceive something as menial as being on time. Mm -hmm. And to some people it doesn't matter at all. You know, so kind of understanding how to meet them where they're at while maintaining a high standard of what I perceive to be excellence. Yeah. You know. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And that's, you know, lowering expectations without having to drop your standards. Right. Yeah. Right, right. Um, yeah. No, very necessary. Just for your own, you know, uh happiness <coughs> and sanity. Right. Honestly. Right. Uh you know, and I noticed for me uh, a big change was I mean, of course, communication's everything. So when I uh if I had certain expectations of a, a, a you know, a, of an individual um instead of telling them what, this is the expectation, this is what I want, this is what I need it by. Right. Uh, I talk to them, I, I let it be, I, I wanna have it be a conversation. Right. You right. know what I mean? Right. This is why I have these, uh, these expectations of you. Right. This is what I see you capable of. Um, you know, 
do you feel, you know, what do you feel, what do you think? Right. You know, how do you see this working out? Um, because, you know, I feel like nine times out of 10, if there is that open communication back and forth, um, it might not work out in that way. They might not see it in that way, right. but they might be able to explain, uh, explain to you something in which kind of shifts your perspective. So right. now right. you can meet halfway where both you guys um, are content with the outcome, right. um, even though it might not look like you expected. Right. You know, there's still a way to move forward. And I think uh, certainly that's the goal always is moving forward. Yeah. Um, well, and I think that's, you know, that's a little bit of uh, uh, the difference between a desired outcome and an expectation. Mm -hmm. Because I think when you expect something, you adhere yourself to it. You marry yourself to it. And anything that deviates from that expectation is bad. And right. we get frustrated right. about Whereas if you have a desired outcome, you know, you want the show to go this way or you want the, um, the class to go this way or you want, uh, for me, you know, it was uh, fighting. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, I want the fight to go this way. I want to win, obviously, you right. know. Um, but if you adhere yourself to an expectation, if the expectation is, you know, there's going to be 1,500 people at this show, all the artists are going to be on time and crush their sets. Imagine if, that. You know, yeah. Right. <laughs> if there's an expectation, you know, for me as, as a coach, if there's an expectation that everybody for class is going to be here on time, everybody's going to do, you know, this and this and this exactly correctly, or if there's an expectation of I expect to win this fight, mm -hmm. if anything goes wrong, you know, it, you, you fall apart. Yeah. You know, uh, for me, the, the first time I lost a fight, I expected to win, you know, and I was very upset about it. And I had to go back and, and reevaluate a lot of things. Right. And uh, really started shifting my focus of, okay, you know, what's the desired outcome is, is a win. Mm -hmm. But I understand that there are things outside of that. You know, I, there's a very good possibility. I just step in the cage with somebody that's better than I am yeah. and I'm not going to win, you know, and then that becomes an unrealistic expectation. You know, if this guy's the next, you know, big UFC star that's just getting his fight on some local promotion, you know, I'm gonna get my ass beat and expecting to win that fight is, is an unrealistic expectation, you right. know. Uh, you can still have a desired outcome, but marrying yourself to it and not giving yourself that wiggle room, that room to grow, yeah. you know. Um, you can still, you know, you can still have a good show if some of the artists are late or fuck up their sets, so you yep. have to improvise a little bit, yep. but you start expecting things, you start getting anxious, you start getting mad, you start getting emotional. And, you know, we talk about it all the time. If you're emotional, your responses and your, your actions aren't always the best. Right. You know? Absolutely. And, and I think um, that's exactly what I was thinking because one of the major changes I made to the shows was the rigidity in it. Uh, you know, I used to have everything down to a T. Da -da, this is going to happen and this and this and this and this. Fit in as much stuff as possible. Uh, for the time allowed and uh, I changed the, my whole uh, outlook on it to like treat it like treat it like vacation you know right. have you I, I don't know if you've ever been on vacation with someone who plans everything out that you got to do you need to do this you need right. to do that right. but that shit is taxing and then yeah. it becomes work again yeah. um, so you know I started creating shows uh, almost in a free flowing I created the form and I didn't really necessarily have to tell anybody else this but I created the form uh, the format of the show created uh, and then I would reach out to certain people that would be able to fill it in yeah. as such yeah. um, and and I wouldn't demand they've got to do it any certain way I let it I let them see it for what it is the potential for what it is and where right. they saw themselves and they could apply whatever right. this is time wise you know this is content this is you know whatever f suits that artist best um, and essentially just uh, stop micromanaging yeah. And yeah. Uh, always left room for change right. and adaptability into right. it. Right. And so it was almost a, and it wasn't like a change that would catch me off guard. You know, it was right. a perceived change. Right. Um, so I noticed that uh, my stress levels were all the way down. Yeah. Um, yeah. The stress levels of the artists were all the way down. Yeah. Uh, I think the enjoyment of uh, just being there because just the fact that it's a show and everyone's getting together, just the fact that it's vacation is still, it's just, right. well, it's great, right. you know? And, and, and you know, and that's fun in itself, and that's mm -hmm. the thing that I wanted to focus on. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm certainly not taking away from, you know, what hard work has to offer. Right. right. Uh, I think, you know, all that work, you know, all this work is done uh, 
you know, at home or in practice, yeah. and things like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but we, you know, when we can get together, um, it's more for the enjoyment of it. Because yeah. if you're having fun <laughs> and the art, artists are having fun, guarantee that the crowd is going to be having, you know, yeah. enjoying themselves Absolutely, as well. So, yeah. uh, leaving room for change is probably um, the biggest adaptations that I've been able to pull from the past to the future. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. And that that really resonates with me, especially in the in the context of, of fighting. Mm -hmm. You know. We say, you know, every, every time we have a fighter going to the cage, it's all right, the hard work's done, man. Go in there and have fun. Mm -hmm. You know, because like you said, you set up the framework. Yep. You have an idea of what you want, but you leave room in there for flexibility. Exactly. All right, you know, our, there's almost every single time you go into a fight, especially when you're dealing with amateur fighters and you're, um, you're up against guys who only have one or two fights, mm -hmm. you know. Or um, a couple months ago, we had uh, one of our female fighters. She was scheduled for an MMA fight. And she's got really good wrestling. She's got a great ground game. So we worked out the whole fight camp. Two weeks before the fight, her opponent drops out and we switch to a kickboxing fight. Mm -hmm. And the rules are very different. You know, you, there's, there's no takedowns, there's no groundwork, it's just stand up. And it's K1, uh, which is a slightly different rule set than a traditional tie fight. Mm -hmm. Where traditional tie fights are a lot of clinching, a lot of you know, grappling work and stuff you, you can implement. And this is just straight up kickboxing. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, which, you know, the, the girl, she wasn't a bad kickboxer. We worked a lot of striking and stuff, but we focused so much on the ground game that when it came time to make that adjustment, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, we had to change our expectations of the fight. And we had to have that fluidity built into the framework to say, okay, well, if this is what we're going to do, this is how we have to structure it. This is what we expect from the fight, and these are the adjustments we have to cool. make. And e in between each round, we were, you know, we we're still we we're trying to make adjustments because two weeks isn't a lot of time to, to change a game plan. Yep. You know, to get yep. a, to get a grappler ready for a striking fight, you know, but a lot of what we talked about today, you know, adjusting the expectations, making them realistic, mm -hmm. building the framework in such a way that we can operate inside of it right. and still have, you know, the ultimate desired outcome was for her to not have waste in a fight camp. And so we went in there, she, she fought hard, her opponent was tough as shit. We, we didn't win the fight, but <laughs> at the end of it, she was glad that she did it, yeah. you know, and that's, that was the desired outcome. To, to get better, Perfect. to be happy on the other side of it, yep. you know. But it's, you know, exactly like you said about structuring these shows and stuff. If we had gone in there, expected to do, you know, X, Y, and Z, and expected to win the fight, mm -hmm. it would have been very frustrating when none of those things happen exactly how we right. want them, you know. Right. And it would have been an unrealistic expectation to make that much of an adjustment that close to the fight, yep. you know. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, and a lot of stuff like this, uh, it... it, it comes through experience you know yeah. it, it comes through not succeeding and it comes through failing um, and you know you you could take that failure as a loss yeah or you can go back and change and adapt right. um, adapt yourself because it's not you know I, I don't think things like this are just known right, right. off the bat right. happen in certain situations right. so definitely comes with experience absolutely man and uh, that I mean the experience of it all you know uh, five years ago when I started coaching and I, I started doing fitness classes, what I would do is I would sit down and I would plan out every minute mm -hmm. of a 60 minute workout. You know, I knew exactly what was going to be done minute by minute by minute. Right. And when I had, you know, some days you'd have a class where two people would show up, some days you'd have a class where 10 people would show up and keeping that same structure, you know, if I, if I had a big class show up and I'd only plan for four people, right. It could be, it made me very anxious, mm -hmm. you know. But eventually, as I, you know, got into more of a routine and I had kind of go to things, if I have this many people, this is what I'll do. And I got to start getting rid of the script, all of a sudden it became more fluid. And I think it became more enjoyable, you sure. know. And now there's a lot of times where I, uh, you know, each day of the week, Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, when I coach a cardio kickboxing class, I have specific, uh, specific body parts I want to work out, you know. Mm -hmm. One day it's lower body, one day it's upper body, one day it's cardio based. So I have you know a very loose framework, right. and then if I have an even number of people, these are some of the rounds I'm going to implement. If I have an odd number of people, these are some of the you know if I have multiples of three, these are some of the rounds I'm sure. going to implement. You know, and this basic framework it gives me a lot more fluidity, and I can also adjust. You know, maybe maybe it's hot as shit in here. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe nobody's really feeling it that day. Maybe I need to dial down the intensity. You know, or maybe. 
everybody's wound up and maybe they want to crush it and I need to dial it up. I need to pull mm -hmm. some of the harder rounds out of the bag to make sure everybody gets what they're looking for, yeah. you know? But the basic framework is there, but it, you know, it's taken a long time of doing, you know, coaching these, these workouts in the same format basically for, you know, the last five years and making right. adjustments within that framework to understand what works better. Yeah. You know, and I've definitely <laughs> um, uh, uh, felt that change. You know, and I could feel the difference in those sort of classes uh, because expectations kind of uh, can keep you from uh, being fully present. Sure. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, if we're uh, in and we're doing the same thing that, you know, maybe we were last time or the same thing that a, a class at a different level would be doing. Right. You know, you can get kind of um, it's just get kind of lost in it. Sure. You know? Yeah. My mind starts drifting someplace else, um, and I'm not and I'm not pushing myself. I know right. well I'm gonna have to do this, 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 and this. Right. So I know that I can get away with this, 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 and this. Right, right, right. But but uh, <laughs> I you know I think with that fully, it, it's it's all about flow. Yeah. I think when you yeah. leave that flexibility in that room to adjust for the crowd that you have. Yeah. Um, you know whoever shows up, however they're feeling, whatever the temperature is. Yeah. Um, I think now. The, it, there, uh, there's a flow of things right, right, right. that you can recognize and hop into and uh, change and adapt. Yeah, as needed. absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I like that. Um, yeah, just kind of flowing with it, going with it. And we talked about that a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And those are the workouts that kind of fly by when you early on, if you're able to kind of establish and feel the vibe of how everybody's doing in class, mm -hmm. how everybody's performing that day. And there'll be times too, where people will walk in and they'll say, I want you to, to smoke us today. Right. I had a rough day and I just want to, I don't want to think about anything. I just want to murder it on the bag. Mm -hmm. They communicate their expectation to me and I can adjust to that, yep. you know? Um, and especially if it's a, a smaller class, there's only four or five people or something. And one person says that everybody hears it. Everybody knows what to expect. Mm -hmm. They don't know the exact, uh, rounds that they're going to have. They don't know the exact workouts they're going to do and stuff, but they know that whatever they're doing is going to be hard, sure. you know, and they can, you know, prepare accordingly. So that's, one notion where uh, the communicating expectations can be a very positive thing. Right. You know, it can be used as a tool for, you know, for mutual growth amongst everybody. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know? <laughs> and uh, in, the, in the same respect, you know, so we, that's more of a cardio kind of a, just a workout when you, when you shift the dynamic to a more technical class, so a, a jiu-jitsu class or a Muay Thai class, we're working on technique and everything is performance-based. Uh, what I used to even shit even as as recently as you know like two months ago I came in and I had um, a, a Muay Thai workout plan and this is what I wanted my students to accomplish for the day this is what I expected out of everybody and for whatever reason it was it was a fairly big class there was probably about fifteen people but every single person that came into class was within their first month of training mm -hmm. and the dynamic of the room was such that I knew right then it hit me. I was like, I cannot do this workout that I had planned. Mm -hmm. I need to change the approach. I need to, I, I need to even change the information of what I had uh, in mind to work on and really do some, some basic stuff and kind of really dial it back. So the group as a whole could progress. Cause I could have shown them the same techniques and stuff and everybody would have done okay with it. But I think people would have left frustrated or feeling kind of down or feeling that like they hadn't accomplished much. Right. And if I had just pushed through kind of how I had it laid out in my mind initially, I don't think anybody would have enjoyed it as much. I think a lot sure. of those people would have been a little disheartened. So once, once that happened, I kind of went back to that more improvisational mindset that I think uh, allows for that flow that we're talking right. about, you know, right. okay, these are, this is my ideal circumstance. Mm -hmm. If everybody's doing well, this is what we're going to get through. If everybody's struggling with this, then I have, you know, an extra five or 10 minutes, I can work on this section and then this goes out the window, mm -hmm. you know, so there's still, there's, there's a, a rigid framework of what I would like to get accomplished. So there's a desired outcome, but the expectation is that everybody's going to get better tonight right. instead of the expectation is I'm going to get through all this material. You know, I expect my students to perform here. Like, let's see where everybody's at and let's build from there. Sure. You know, absolutely. I, uh, you know, I, I was actually listening to the speaker talk about uh, expectations, and um, he took a quick survey with the audience, and he was like, all right, 
Um, of these three scenarios, what do you guys think would make you the happiest? And uh, he's like, uh, if, in, if you're in the Olympics and you run your race, what would make you the happiest? Would it be to get uh, the silver medal, second place? Would it be to get the bronze medal, uh, which is third place? Uh, or would it be to uh, get second to last? And um, I mean, you can imagine what everyone would raise their hand and say. Sure. That uh, they say they'd be happiest with that second place medal. Yeah. And he's like, uh, he's like, uh, actually, you know, research shows that as far as happiness goes, um, the second place medal is the least happiness. Right because they had their expectation of getting first. That's yeah. what they think of. And, yeah. and they're like, uh, um, the one that rated the highest as far as happiness and contentment is that third place winner because they think about having gotten fourth place right, right, right. and mixed in with right. the rest of the crowd. Um, so, you know, I just thought it was interesting as far as uh, what expectations really put um, you know, on, on that end result, on that outcome yeah. and happiness. Yeah, and it really, it really changes that, uh, really changes the perception of yes. everything, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, a good buddy of mine, we were talking about this uh, worst case scenario mm -hmm. earlier, uh, he introduced me to this, um, I, I call it playing worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. um, he's a good friend of mine and he's uh, uh, struggled with anxiety for a long time, you know. Sure. Um, He's, you know, we've talked a lot about it. He's very concerned about uh, people's perceptions of him, mm -hmm. outcomes, always wants to be the best with everything. So in his way, this is kind of uh, um, managing expectations, right? right? So the third place medal, their worst case scenario would have been, you know, fourth place. And, right. and you know, just disappearing into the, the fog of people who didn't make the podium. Mm -hmm. um, and when my buddy plays this game, he really... He extrapolates, he plays into almost a ridiculous proportion. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the um, examples I like to use is uh, at, you know, asking a girl out on a date. You know, kind of, all right, well, you're nervous, you're gonna ask her. Uh, the, the biggest thing is she's either gonna say yes or no. Right. right? That's probably what's gonna happen. He's like, but if she says no, I'm gonna be a little bummed out, obviously, right? But worst case scenario, worst case scenario is not only does she say no, but you know, she comes over, comes over to the house, yells in your face, punches you in the face, steals your dog, uh, posts on social media that you're a schmuck and that nobody right. should ever talk to you, and you know, and then like cut your brake lines. Sure. You know, so obviously that's probably not going to happen. Probably. Right? It probably oh. not. Right? <laughs> but that's you know that's the worst case scenario. That's the worst possible way this could possibly go. Right. So if it goes any better than all that happening. Mm -hmm it's a win, sure. you know? So worst case scenario, you get fourth place, you disappear in the fog of miscellaneous people that mm -hmm. were at the Olympics one time all those years ago. But if it's any better than that, if you get third place, that's a huge win, sure. you know? And what's nice about playing worst case scenario to, to such a ridiculous extent is it makes it almost laughable. Right. And you can kind of laugh at yourself like, okay, yeah, that is ridiculous for me to be that worried about yeah. what's going on. Sure, here, you sure. Know? You know, just to be able to blow off a little bit of steam like that, sure. uh, yeah. I think will be helpful. But it's good that he knows himself to the, it, you know, in a way that that's what works for him. Right. right you know, right. it might not work for everybody, but that yeah. works for him. Yeah. But to have some sort of outlet um, that kind of, you know, like I said, you know, let's go a little bit of that steam, you know, let's go yeah. a little bit of that weight and helps you better adjust, right. um, you know, yeah. the, the, how you view it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely man. Um, and I mean, you and I have kind of, kind of done that a little bit with, uh, you know, KTI combos is that, I mean, worst, worst case scenario is that people, you know, use this clip. They put it on, you know, some other some other platform. Like, hey, look at these assholes! Look how stupid these right, guys are. Right. Right. But I mean, you know, obviously, and except for this specific clip, maybe somebody's gonna use that one. <laughs> a bunch of fucking clowns. But uh, I, you know, realistically, when you you know you extrapolate to that ridiculous extent, realistically, you have to reel it back in and say, okay, like you and I have talked about worst case scenario. You and I are hanging out talking for an hour every week. Right. That's the worst case scenario. That's a realistic worst case scenario. If it's any better than that, awesome, mm -hmm. you know? And the expectation now becomes, we're gonna sit down and we're gonna have fun and, and 
you know, the desired result is it makes an impact on somebody. Mm -hmm. uh, but the expectation is that we enjoy, you know, each other's company and we get to benefit ourselves right. and hopefully along the way, you know, make, make a difference. Right. You know. Uh, yeah, and you know, because you, you, you look down the road, you think about, you know, a little bit in the future. So maybe no one at all will watch this episode whatsoever. Right. Um, or maybe, uh, 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 you know, who knows, a million, a million, a million people doing it goes viral. Yeah. Uh, no matter what that is in the future, uh, all we've got is the combo itself. Exactly. You know, exactly. to, to, to exactly. learn as, you know, as we go, as much as we can. Yeah. No matter what that outcome is. Yeah. Um, and you know, as long as that's the case, then we've done what we came to do. Right. You know, right. essentially. Right. Yeah, and any anything better than that, you know, anything different than that is just is a bonus. Yeah. You know. Absolutely. Um, and that, I mean, it is. It, it's very freeing and it's very exciting and uh, definitely makes me look forward to it every week. I know the yeah. first, you know, first couple of months of this, it was I was definitely nervous a lot of times or anxious or. Uh, worried mm -hmm. you know or, or learning to manage my expectations with the with the project and all that and now it's every week i know that it's going to be enjoyable it's going to be fun and and leaves us free to just kind of see what happens yeah you know? absolutely uh you know because we've talked about um plenty of times we talked about getting too lost in the future and uh how that anxiousness uh yeah. uh of the unknown uh turns into anxiety sure um sure. Or, or certainly looking back at some videos that didn't perform uh, as well as others, right. uh, and and kind of uh, wallowing in that, sure. and and having that kind of make you a little bit depressed, right. um, where uh, you know, as far as just staying in the present, yeah. you know, maintaining that, learning from the past, um, you know, I, assuming the future. And, and, and trying to understand how that comes about, yeah. I think is important. I think, you know, there are levels to it. It's certainly a skill, um, but getting lost in it to the point where you can no longer be fully present, um, you know, it, it's, it's a problem. Absolutely. It, it's a hindrance Absolutely. Um, to and that I, contentment. I, it's definitely, it's important to, to do what you can to influence your desired outcome, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but there's always, you know, circumstances that are out of our control. Yeah. You know, so understanding the responsibility, like it's it's my responsibility to do the best I can to influence what I feel is going to be a positive outcome. Mm -hmm. And if changes come along the way, if if other people do things that that divert from that path, or if just universally things happen that mm -hmm. that don't allow for this to you know progress down the path that I kind of foresaw, right. accepting that that's the the reality of the situation and continuing from there you yes. know instead of expecting okay I'm gonna get from point A to point B just like this mm -hmm. if you have that expectation and you have that that laser focus you know yep. you have blinders on to everything else that's actually happening around you when a tree falls in your path you don't know how to go around it right that just fucked up all your expectations and right then you know you have to deal with the the depression and the anxiety and the, and the frustration and the anger and all these negative emotions mm -hmm. that that correlate to being so rigidly fixated on, on one path. Yeah. You know? You, you know, and I'm still stuck on that phrase you mentioned last week, uh, just as far as uh, in regarding to embracing the chaos. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, being yeah. the first step to, you know, adapting and then changing. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's no different from this. Yeah. Uh, you know, you can let all those things, people's um, indifference or, or uh, 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 get in the way and stop you and keep you from doing what you do, um, or you could learn to adapt to it and change sure. and, and, and be better. You know, I, I think certainly the only thing that we actually have control over is, you know, how we respond to the situation. Right. Um, right. The amount of work that we put into, it, you know, in our effort um, and our responsibility to uh, um, uh, grow in our perspective. Yeah. yeah. You know, those are, those are the things that we have control on um, and anything else, um, are the th are, are the stimulus that uh, help us to know that it's time to adapt, it's time to change, right. it's time to carry on. Right. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Man. The only, the only expectation is to expect yourself to adapt and grow. Yeah. You know, yeah. expect to change. Yep. Absolutely. Awesome, man. Cool, Quince, man. Uh, glad you made it out today. I know you've been feeling pretty under the weather lately, so. Yeah. Uh, 
but I, I expect you to be here every week. Yeah, and yeah. You, and that's you what I'm here. Superseded expectations. <coughs> and, um, so hopefully you rest up and and are uh, feeling a little more for sure. Ready to go next I, week. I definitely always look forward to it. You yeah. know, every Tuesday, yeah. which yeah. wasn't always the case. Sure, sure, um, <laughs> sure. But it is, and you know, growingly so as we move yeah. forward. So you know, absolutely. everything, everything grows, man. Everything absolutely. Grows. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, brother. Yeah. Thank, Thank you all guys for joining in. us. Absolutely. And we'll see everybody next week. Two days.